Uh, Tad, uh, you guys end up losing by nine. Dug yourself a, a big uh, first half hole in this one. Give us a thought or two in the ball game. Yeah, Mark, disappointing because boy, we we uh, I thought defensively we played well enough to win. You know, you guys know I'm not a zone coach. I felt like you know we really had trouble guarding them. Uh, Evan got in foul trouble. We went to the zone. It was successful, so we stuck with it. Um, but offensively, holy, oh, we, we were so bad tonight. So, and if not Tennessee, you got to give them credit because they crawled up into us. They saw the K State film. Um, you know, the difference is Tennessee was able to sustain that defensive effort for 40 minutes, whereas K State was not. And so we were able to kind of get going offensively uh, against the Kansas State team. But tonight we weren't. Uh, but you turn the ball over 23 times, Mark, and you shoot 33%. I mean, it's a recipe for getting blown out. And uh, so I, I think, you know, I got to credit our guys. I mean, we didn't get blown out. I mean, that nine point game was, you know, four free throws at the end by Tennessee. So it's really a, a, a five point game. But we were not uh, good enough offensively. I got to do a better job, you know, as their coach. Um, but I thought we dribbled the ball way too much. We were so impatient. And, you know, some of our turnovers are self inflicted, some of them were as a result of Tennessee. We got to learn to handle pressure better because if anybody watches these two games, they're going to see, boy, you climb up, climb up into Colorado and they will, they'll pee down their leg and give you the ball. And that's because that's what we do. We got to learn how not to do that. Well, and to, to, to your point, it really seemed like tonight the, the idea by Rick Barnes and his crew was to get very uh, up in McKinley, get physical with him, and force him to give the ball to somebody else. And th that's where you need other guys in your roster to really kind of pick things up and, and, and run the show then for, for the we ball. We do, Mark. There's no doubt about it. We need we need guys to step up because McKinley can't be, beat people by himself. And they were their whole game plan was to take him out of the game offensively, which they did a good job of. And that's where we have to move the ball. And we have to, you know, we can't just dribble, dribble, dribble. You know, and uh, we, we talked to McKinley, when you're dribbling the ball and driving the ball, you're not going to get to the rim because their defense is going to suck in and gap up. And so now what you have to do is get the ball moved. And when you get the ball moved, that guy might not have a shot. He's got to now get the ball moved. We got to move the ball from one side of the floor to the other, get the ball inside. When we get the ball inside, we got to be able to operate and do something with it. We did that a, a couple of times, but but you know our whole game plan was to play inside out. But we just dribbled too much, and again, we turned that thing over as a result of over penetration, over dribbling, and uh, we we got we got room for improvement certainly on the offensive end. And I guess a positive you can talk about: uh, Jariah Horn comes out and gives you 15 points, 11 rebounds, gave you a nice effort tonight. Jariah is a good player on the offensive end. We, we got to make sure defensively now he's got the same level of intensity that he's got on the offensive end. There's no question he's a, he's a weapon. Um, but again, Mark, midway through the second half, we saw they started switching our ball screens with our with Jariah. And so, and with Jabari too, when Jabari was in there. And our whole idea was when we set a ball screen and they switch, that means Jariah and Jabari have a guard on them. Well, they're both six foot seven, six foot eight. We work on their post game all the time. Now what they have to do is roll to the rim and post the guard. But what we've got is we've got guys that just want to pick and pop and shoot three point shots. And when teams are switching, that's not going to be an effective strategy. And we never, we talked about it. I can promise you that but we never got them to do that. And, and again, that's on me. Uh, I got to do a better job. Uh, you know, we look, we, we drag out the free throw line there at the end and make two free throws. We're supposed to press. We make the second free throw, we're not in our press. Mm -hmm. you know, those are the little things that, that, that we have to get better at that we can control. Um, and, and again, it gets back to controlling what you can control as a player and as a coach. I got to do a better job. I can tell you that. I, I know that after watching, watching this team play tonight, I've got to do a better job as a coach. And, uh, uh, we got to do a better job concentrating and, and relying on each other offensively rather than just relying on our individual talents. Because we got some individually talented guys, but when you don't play together and work together and move the ball and share the ball and, and uh, take care of the ball, you got no shot. I guess a good team. We yeah. played a good team tonight. Well, I got this, and I've heard you say this kind of thing before. Uh, you can learn some lessons from this, and that'll be fine, and they'll be good moving forward, but you, you miss a golden opportunity here tonight. Absolutely, Mark. And I think that's that's the feeling in our locker room is our players know it, that we missed this opportunity. And, and, and look, 
I want to give Tennessee credit. You know, Tennessee's a good team, a well-coached team, a very talented team. They're, you know, preseason number 12 for a reason. Uh, they, they, they're they're going to have a good year. They're going to win a lot of games, uh, not only outside the conference, but inside the conference once they get an SEC play. So, uh, golden opportunity for the Buffs that we, we tripped off tonight. But uh, credit Tennessee, uh, we can learn from this. And this, this is why you come play these kind of games is, is to is to learn. Now, the question is, what are we going to do with it next time it happens? And we better, we better handle it better tonight uh, or better in the future than we handle it tonight offensively. Or, you know, we're going to rely on our defense a lot. But I thought our defense was good enough tonight or that our offense was, oh, boy, it was atrocious. I take responsibility for that. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Safe travels. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, we'll go ahead and continue with the general media. First question uh, from Teresa Walker. Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned that McKinley struggles, but that 17-2 to two start by the Vols, how tough, Yeah, even though you got it close there at the end, it's tough when you fall behind that much to start a game? Yeah, it's tough. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, look, we uh, we, we fought our way back in the game. We got to, a, you know, uh, I think a one possession game at one point, certainly four or five points a couple times. We just couldn't get over the hump because – we turned it over so much. No, and look, right there. We had some open shots, uh, Teresa, that, that we've got to be able to make uh, when you get them. Because, again, no, when you play pieces. against a good team, play against a good basketball team defensively, You, when you get good shots, you better be able to knock them down because, you know, you're not going to always get great looks. And you're going to have to make some tough shots. We weren't able to make many tough shots tonight, and we didn't make many open shots tonight. Um, and we turned it over 23 times. So that, that's the story of the game. The 17-2, you know, deficit at the beginning, you know, that, that you, you never want to come out like that. Um, but, again, offensively. And, then, you know, the zone got us back in the game because, uh, obviously, we, we couldn't guard those guys man-to-man. -man. So we went zone. And, and uh, early in the season, it gave them a little bit of trouble. But we couldn't capitalize on the offensive end. Okay, Pat Rooney. Coach, uh, I know you're not going to make an excuse for this, but you mentioned the early defense. Uh, what did it mean not having Eli Parquet tonight? Well, look, we want to have all hands on deck. This is our third game. We've not been at full strength yet, but you know, the, that's why you have 13 guys on scholarship path. That's why you have, um, you know, uh, guys on the bench that are ready to go when their number's called. And certainly Eli helps us defensively. Um, and he's been making open shots at least he did in, in, in Manhattan, Kansas. So, yeah, we, we missed Eli, but we didn't have him tonight. Didn't have Luke O'Brien tonight. Uh, has nothing to do with uh, those guys missing the game of, of why we lost. It has everything to do with what we didn't do offensively and what Tennessee did defensively to us. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, Justin, go ahead. Coach, you, uh, you used the word impatient in your opening statement, and maybe uh, Keyshawn in particular kind of fell into that boat. You're all done. Did you show a bit all tonight just in, in his shot selection? It seemed like a number of shots he took were kind of just head scratchers. Yeah, look, the, the one at the end of the first half, we set a high ball screen for him. They switch it. He comes off, and he just he just shoots a three. Like, you know, like he, just, he sometimes he settles for threes. He's really good in the ball screens, but he's got to engage the big. He's got to be in attack mode. Uh, his floater, floaters didn't make it tonight. His, uh, you know, look, Keyshawn's a good player. He's learned. I mean, this is the, this is baptism by fire for him. He's a freshman, okay, playing his third college basketball game um, against a top 25 team that can really guard and pressure you. So he can learn from tonight. He's going to be fine. He's a good player. But, yeah, impatience uh, was a problem for us offensively tonight. Keyshawn was – you know, a part of that, but he wasn't the only one. I can promise you, a lot of our guys were impatient, and they want to try to. You know, we got good players, and when you got good players, they want to try to do it by themselves. But against good teams, you can't beat people by yourself. But McKinley Wright can't beat Tennessee by himself. He's got to rely on his teammates. His teammates got to rely on him. We got to work together and, and be more of a cohesive unit offensively. Tonight, we were not that. This is going to be a hard, hard game to watch again. You know, as the coach. Uh, on the offensive end, there's no doubt about it. Eat your peaches. Okay, hard Pisani. Hey, Coach. Like Pat was saying, I know you don't want to get into making any excuses, but 
in terms of having to miss practice last week and then go back to practice and have all the games switched around and then the last minute adjustment, do you think that had any impact on at least how you started or anything else now you played? No, I don't, Hart, because our guys were ready to play. And, yeah, we, you know, we got our 30 practices in before our first game, and we didn't have any issues. So we've, we've had plenty of practice time. Look, Tennessee's had more COVID uh, stoppages and missed practices than, than, than Colorado has, I promise you that. And they, they got out to a 17-2 to two, you know, lead. So, no, it has nothing to do with COVID. It has nothing to do with – you know, not being able to practice. It has, nothing, it has everything to do with our inability to effectively play against a hard-pressuring defensive team. And that's where we have to get better. So I'd like to say, yeah, it's, it's a result of those things, but it's not. It's really not. We got a veteran team. And we got some freshmen that are learning, you know, play four, four freshmen tonight. Um, so that's part of it. But our veterans, they, they got to play like veterans. And we didn't, our veterans didn't play like veterans tonight. Okay, Pat Rooney, go ahead. Coach, what has happened to get Evan Batty going? Yeah, I think Evan's just got to be, I think, number one, uh, he doesn't have to think. I think he's thinking a little bit too much when he's, when he's got the ball uh, on the block. And I think he's just got to play. He's got good instincts. Um, but we, we've got we've got to get him going uh, offensively because he's a – He's a weapon down there. And Dallas Walton's a weapon down there. Dallas had – look, those guys both had really good opportunities tonight to score. But, you know, we got stripped a lot. They were digging. Uh, our spacing wasn't always good. We had trouble catching and finishing tonight in the lane. Uh, again, Tennessee, very active. They're long. They're athletic. They've got – they're very active hands. Um, so they're a tough team to score on. But we've got to we've got to find a way to get Evan going a little bit more offensively. But look, our whole our whole group tonight was was inept offensively. It wasn't just Evan. Okay, uh, we'll go with one final question from uh, Justin Guerrero. So it's just with uh, Deshaun, uh, just watching him, it looked like kind of just frustrations were following him uh, up and down the court. He'd make a mistake in the offensive zone, it would impact his defense, vice versa. Did you see him at all just fighting a little bit of a mental battle, maybe just getting trapped in his own his own head with those frustrations? Yes. I'll leave it at that. <laughs>